Joshua Smith here, and welcome to the GSD Mode Podcast. Now get shit done and smash that subscribe button now. What is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here with another GSD Mode Podcast interview where every single week I interview top real estate professionals, top entrepreneurs, and straight up top badasses that they're dominating their space. So people choosing to not live a life of mediocrity, but instead to go out and create big, amazing, epic lives for themselves, for the families, as well as have a big impact on others. And today, guys, got another badass rock star guest here on the show. So our guest today, you guys, Harold Collins. So Harold, uh, in 2019, so just last year, he was a 30 under 30 finalist with an NAR. And that is uh, uh, an extremely prestigious award which uh, they go out there and showcase the top 30 agents in the United States under 30 years old. So a uh, very prestigious award. He's out there crushing it, slaying it in his real estate business, young hustler, and uh, breaks down a lot of, of what he is doing for his personal branding. Also, what he is doing with video. He's got a very out-of-the-box, very effective video strategy that he breaks down that he is doing. And one thing that's very interesting, you guys, is almost 100% of all of his production and his team's production comes from repeat referral business. And I know that we would all love to build a business where we had tremendous amounts of repeat referral business coming in, and he breaks down how they've been able to create and do that. Now, real quick, before we jump into this amazing podcast interview, if you are a real estate agent, team leader, or brokerage owner that is looking to massively grow and scale your real estate business and you'd like to be coached and mentored by me personally for the next 12 months of your life, make sure to check out masterybootcamp.com. This is my personal mentorship and coaching program where you can learn more and see if it is a fit for you. Again, masterybootcamp.com. Also, if you are looking for a hands down, the most effective and affordable website CRM provider in the real estate industry, this is the system that I have that I utilize that allows my team to continue to be one of the top teams on the planet. Make sure to check out perfectstormnow.com. Again, perfectstormnow.com. All right, guys, with that being said, let's jump on into this amazing, epic podcast interview. All right, Harold, my man, so stoked and honored to have you here on the podcast with us today. I appreciate you having me. Yeah, no, man, this is going to be awesome, dude. And, and first off, I just want to say congrats on uh, winning the 30 under 30, NAR 30 under 30 uh, finalists in 2019, which uh, they just announced the winners recently. And I know that's a, you know, a huge award and, and uh, you know, um, that's amazing, man. So I just want to commend and congrats you on, on winning that and all your hard work, dude. That's awesome. I appreciate that very much. Yep. I uh, 100% dude. And before we get into all the things that you're doing uh, today in your career, man, because I know that, you know, you continue to grow your business and you're doing a lot of, you know, unique things that, that continues to allow you to create more and more success. I'm always intrigued in our guest journeys that led them here in the first place. We were on the clocks, man. I mean, how, how did this journey in the real estate industry begin? Uh, it was uh, unexpected to say the least. Uh, I was planning to Originally thought about going into physical therapy while I was down in college at South Alabama. And then I was transitioning, figured out I didn't want to keep going to school. So I was transitioning to uh, thinking, you know, into medical sales. I had three older brothers. I had one in medical sales. He and I are a lot alike. So that's just what I imagined. But my mom, uh, um, well, unfortunately, because she was sick, but, you know, everything happens for a reason. God has a plan. And uh, she was sick for about my entire senior year of college and um, needed help. So she asked me if I'd come help her. And I said, yes, ma'am. And um, so I figured, you know, at least starts getting me some experience in the, in the work workforce. And uh, seven years later, here I am, uh, you know, kind of dabbled in a little bit, everything, mostly residential, you know, some commercial I've gotten a flip under my belt and, uh, and a flip and a rent rental under my belt. So, uh, you know, I enjoy being able to share that with, uh, friends my age and just also anybody looking to invest or purchase. Uh, um, but yeah, that's kind of how, how I got here. I guess. That's awesome. So, so your mom was in the, it, were in the real estate business, right? So that's the business that you, you helped her with as she was sick that year. Um, so, you know, how long had your mom been in the business? I mean, cause I'm, I'm guessing if she'd been in the business for some time, you know, being your mom, you probably had somewhat of an idea of. Wasn't her know, first that, occupation, but she had been in about 12 years before I got in. Um, so I guess now I'll be seven years come August. So she, she's getting close to 19 years. Um, and she, you know, she, we, we work together. She's still very active. She just works from home. Uh, you know, she, she's earned that. And, uh, she's, a, she's my mentor. Um, you know, nobody, not a better person to have your back 
than your mother. You know, you know, uh, you've been in the real estate business for a good while now. You you understand there's there's always new scenarios, and you never know who has the uh, best interests uh, in mind and who do, does not. So uh, it's nice to have somebody I can always depend on. Yeah, I love that, dude. So. You know, I mean, the, we all know the stats, right, of, uh, I mean, this is a tough industry. 90% of agents drop out in the first three years and so forth. And, you know, that, the, the first year or two is so crucial, right, to lay the foundation and create the momentum for, for our future success and so forth. What were some of the things that you started immediately doing, you know, in your first, second year, so forth, that allowed you, number one, to not become a statistic, you know, right, to stay in this for the long haul and, and allow you to create that momentum and success that you've continued to, to have? Right. Uh, I think it was, uh, you know, figuring out how I wanted to, how I wanted to be perceived. Um, and that was, you know, one thing that started that, which I think I told you was kind of by accident is I started wearing the bow tie. Uh, and I just, I happened to put one on. I don't, I don't know how to tie a tie for just fun fact, but I, I tie all my bow ties. Um, but I started dressing the same daily. Uh, which I've, I've come to learn is really just a walking billboard for myself um, in the beginning, which I still do now. And uh, a little bit of a shame to admit that I don't do it as much as I used to, but handed out business cards to every person that I saw, told them what I did. I made sure that I knew everything that was hitting the market, uh, you know, what the market trends were. So whatever, however I could speak to them to areas that they may be interested in or, you know, where, where they live, I could be knowledgeable, you know, in that their market area. Uh, so they understand, Hey, you know, I should call this guy cause he brings value. Um, so doing that. And then also just carried myself the same way all the time. Um, I'm big on, uh, you know, from Alabama, just, Southern manners, you know, yes, ma'am, yes, sir. Some people don't like it because they might just be, you know, five, ten years older than me, but it's just something that was instilled into me. But I think they understand I'm trying to be respectful. So um, respectful and trustworthy, I think, are two of the things that have helped me maintain clients and friends because I, I just tend, up, tend to become friends with who I'm working with. And, um, uh, you know, I think that's one of the things that I have really appreciated. You know, when I, I, I just last week, I helped a guy that helped him sell his house five years ago, and they're older than me. But when they found out they were moving back to Birmingham, first thing he told his wife, well, you need to call Harold. So uh, the fact that they trust me that much to help them um, both moving away from Birmingham and then back to Birmingham, uh, it really means a lot. Yeah, love it, dude. So, so a few follow up questions there. Um, you know, I get reached out here on the podcast from a lot of, a lot of, you know, young, young people that are wanting to jump into indus the industry. And you, you got in at a young age, and you know, so did I at twenty three years old. And um, you know, I know it's man, it can be intimidating. You know, it's it's always scary. I think to start a new career. You know, like when you're handing out those business cards, you know, trying to get your name known, but it's like, well, I haven't done deals yet. I don't really, you know, what can I bring to the table of value? But then also you know, there's another component to it. And maybe it's just a mindset thing, a limiting belief, but also being young, you know, the average realtor is 57 years old. Here you are in your, you know, early, early twenties jumping in, you know, what were some of the things that you did to maybe overcome some of those limiting beliefs as a new agent, also so young um, that allowed you to go out there, maybe, you know, have that internal confidence to go out there and have those conversations and so forth. Right. Well, uh, I think not being afraid to ask questions to, from experienced realtors, um, people that I wanted to, you know, mend my business to, to be like. And also, like I'm, I've already mentioned, my mom, Judy Collins, I always haven't heard ask questions to. Um, dressing professional, not being in a T-shirt, things like that. You know, I've been wearing this for a long time now. I think that did help me in some ways. Although, as you can tell, still a little bit of baby face. I can't grow a beard. You know, I had a lady, an older lady at a listing appointment yesterday say, how, how old are you? <laughs> uh, I always like to let them guess. And she thought I was 22 years old. I, I am 30 now. But um, but uh, let's see, we're going to the, I lost a rabbit trail. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah no, it's all good. Just, just, the, just the confidence when you're new and also being so young. Um, yeah, uh, so, you know, I still face that sometimes today, not as much, but, uh, 
yeah, being young, not being afraid to say, I don't know the answer. If, they, if there's a question I don't know, I don't want to pretend like I know it. I say, I'll find out and get back to them in a timely manner. So I'm never afraid to say, you know, I don't have your answer. I don't have that knowledge, but I'll find out for you. Um, and I, that's honestly, that's how I was able to complete my first commercial deal on a warehouse downtown. I knew nothing, man. I spent so much time, you know, learning the ways of the commercial world to make that deal work. And it started out as going to be this, you know, million dollar building and it ended up being a, we settled on a $270,000 building. So I didn't necessarily make a whole lot for my time, uh, but I learned a lot. And I also asked a mentor who's in the commercial, commercial field down here, I asked him to mentor me through that process. I wasn't afraid to say, hey, I don't know. I know you're an expert. You mind please helping me? And I paid him a referral fee just for any time I had a question. I called him with those questions. He, he walked me through it. That way I knew I was helping my client the best way possible. So being young, not being afraid to say I didn't, you know, I don't have a bit of knowledge and, but letting them know I'll find out and I'll get you that answer and making sure, you know, I was doing it in a timely manner. Yeah. Yeah. Being resourceful is so huge. And, and I think that's so important, man, because we're never going to have all the answers, you know, right. Yeah. But having that confidence that we can go out there and be resourceful and get the answers. And, you know, I don't know if there's a much more important trait to have success and not just real estate, but in business and being extremely resourceful. So love that dude. Um, here. Well, I, well, I love this <laughs> and I appreciate your invite. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent, man. And, uh, you know, talk to us about the dress, man, you know, you know, dressing professionally, but also more than that, like you've, you've built up a personal brand being known as, you know, the bow tie guy, you know, right. Um, and I think it's so important, you know, right. A lot of agents don't dress the part, you know, I mean, more of my market here in Phoenix, Arizona, it's a very casual market. And, you know, I had a mentor cause I was afraid of being young and he's like, dude, just just wear a suit every day and, and age won't be an issue. And, and nobody wears suits in my market, but very quickly I got to be known as that guy, you know, right. And you walk, you know, kind of talk to us about the importance and the impact that that's had and how it's also led to this personal brand that you built. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, bow ties definitely stand out uh, a little bit more than maybe just a regular tie. Um, you know, I make sure it's, People have asked me before, you know, is that a clip on or is that I never wear a clip on? I have one clip on. The client got it for me and it's made out of cork, so you can't tie it. So, um, but I get asked that often. Um, but it's really, it's important to me because, you know, you could be dealing, whether I'm dealing with a $150,000 client, you know, looking for homes that's went to high school with me, you know, because I could show up in a t shirt and they wouldn't care. But whether I'm dealing with them or I'm dealing with a, you know, $1.4 million doctor that, you know, expects professionalism because that's, you know, his field, that's what he sees. Um, I'm the same every day. So I don't have to put on a, put on a face to do this one and I can relax on this one. I'm always the same all the time. Uh, that gives me confidence because I know that, you know, if I see somebody out, they're, they're going to see me as, Hey, this guy who looks the part, acts the part, can talk the part now, maybe not so much in the beginning, but learn my ways. Um, I think it just, it shows them the importance they are to me, how important they are to me because how I present myself to them routinely. Um, so, uh, that's, uh, you know, I've gotten a lot of compliments about it, but where, uh, where I started to really see the value in it was people commenting on, man, love seeing your bow ties or love those videos uh, where you're showing your bow ties. I used to do videos of just bow tie the day before I had as much knowledge to speak on in the real estate world. I would, you know, whether it be a local business or, or a listing or something like that, I would speak to that, but I'd always feature the bow tie. Um, and, you know, people started, people asked me, do you, sleep in your bow tie like do you ever not have your bow tie on i've never seen you not in your bow tie um so when people do see me not in it uh that that's what catches them off guard now yeah i mean at the end of the day man it's all about uh, differentiating ourselves and you've been able to do it with your personal brand that's something that people can identify it's unique you know right and at the end of the day it's it's much it's much more easy 
you know, right, for me to be like, oh, that's the bow tie guy, you know, right, versus trying to remember somebody's name and so forth. And, you know, that personal branding is huge, man. I love that, dude. Um, you know, speak to us, man. I know the vast majority of your business is, is repeat referral business. And a lot of agents do a very bad job with this. You know, the NAR stat is something like 88% of buyers and sellers said they love their agent, would utilize them again, and only 11% do a repeat transaction because they lose touch, forget their name or, or whatever. And, you know, but you build probably one of the highest percentage referral businesses probably in the country, at least that I'm aware of, man. Um, what, what, what has been the key to that? Uh, really, it's just, um, I don't know how to, how to say it more than just, just being myself and kind of how I mentioned it is they become my friends, you know, whether it's somebody that I'll interact with routinely or, or not, uh, I try to get to know, you know, what they enjoy. Um, you know, if they have kids, that's big to me, especially now since I have kids, I understand just how important it is when somebody, you know, if they know the name of my son, you know, that, that means a lot to me. So, you know, in my, in my notes for, for each, each client, I make sure to have child children's names. Uh, maybe they love dogs, anything like that. They love sports. Um, just something that, you know, when I want to make my calls to them just to touch base, you know, however often it is, uh, I know what they enjoy talking about and um, just knowing a little bit about their life instead of just calling and saying hello without any, any meat to actually talk about. Um, that's what I try to, I try to make sure I, I know a little bit about them so I can make sure I speak asking questions for them, for me to listen. Cause that's really what I want to do. I, I want to listen to them. Uh, not so much me do all the talking. So give them reasons to take the mic maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. I mean, it's so powerful, right? Because it's, you know, we got, we got to be interested in others and, and, Today, it's really more powerful than ever before because it's like, when's the last time you had a conversation with somebody where they gave you five minutes of their undivided attention, wasn't about them, they weren't hijacked, in, you know, hijacked the conversation and made it all about you where they, they appear to be truly, genuinely interested. It's like, right. I, th I think most of us probably can't even think of the last conversation that that's happened, <laughs> you know, and yeah. So then with that, man, I mean, are you, cause it sounds like, all right, like, Hey, I've got all these in my database. Um, you know, cause you can, how, no matter how deep the, the connection is when they're buying a home or whatever through you, let's just say it's another seven years before they sell, right? Like it's easy to, to, to out of sight, out of mind. So, you know, it sounds, I mean, how often are you following up with, you know, these people reaching out to them with conversations and you also friend requests maybe on social media. So you're staying in touch with them that way. You know, what, what are some of those things that you're doing strategy wise? I usually try to make sure I friend request them on social media just because, uh, which I'm sure we'll get to, but I do a lot of videos. So uh, it's an easy way for people to stay in touch with what I'm doing, whether it's watching funny videos on with households and local businesses, or it's watching my son play golf. My, I have an almost three-year-old son that can really strike the golf ball. And I get more comments on that now than anything else, real estate related or anything, because people love watching him hit the golf ball. So, uh, you know, even though it's not real estate related, it's still me connecting with people and, you know, they know what I do. So just, you know, kind of bringing you yourself back to top of mind for them. You know, I think that's the goal as far as repeat, repeat business and staying in touch. Um, I do try to, I'm in, obviously in the car a lot. So I just uh, have, try to have my headset with me and have a list of people that I'd like to talk to that week. And I just, I just make calls. I've uh, just, you know, saying hello and making sure I, I know what I want to talk with them about. So um, phone calls are really the, the big thing for me. I'm, I'm not necessarily big on mail outs or, or anything like that. It's more, you know, just speaking to them. Um, and also uh, if there's ever an event, community event like Hoover baseball, Hoover football, Barron's game, which is our minor league baseball team, something that I, I know that they enjoy, if I'm able to get tickets or invite people, uh, I, I try to make sure I reach out to, to, to people for those reasons. A uh, big one that I just did, I, man, I got to touch base with so many people. I was the uh, chair for a charity event, which is uh, a night under the big top. You should come this year, February 19th, 2021, best party in Birmingham. 
but it's for uh, Glenwood, which helps uh, children and adults. Uh, they take care of over 10,000 children and adults every year uh, with autism. And um, so, you know, I got a lot of tickets for that and um, just reached out to my database just saying, hey, told them why I, I love supporting this organization. Would love to see you there. It's, you know, bring your dancing shoes. It's going to be a fun time. Um, so uh, that was a great time to, because not everybody's going to be able to come. So, you know, you're going to get some no's. But, man, I got to talk to so many people, and it was fantastic just catching up with people and then seeing all of them at an event that meant so much to me just really uh, filled my heart knowing how they uh, are supporting myself and the organization. Yeah, yeah. I think so many agents get caught up in the – they don't want to be annoying and just like, you know, every time they call like begging for referrals and so forth. So it sounds like, you know, the, the, the key for you is reaching out with things of value and being truly interested in them. So it's not necessarily about, you know, you being this annoying salesperson pest that every time you call them, it's just, who do you know looking to buy or sell, you know, right? Like you're depositing lots of value into those relationships. Right. And I think I honestly, sometimes I err on the side of caution uh, cause I, you know, I don't necessarily ask for the business, uh, especially that like I used to, um, you know, I do still, I get a lot of referrals, but I think sometimes I, I miss out on some, um, because I, you know, I'm, I tell people I'm not going to be pushy. If you would like for me to be pushy to get you in a house in a certain amount of time, you let me know. Cause my way of business is I'm going to be here when you need me. I'm going to make sure you get the information when you need it, but I'm not going to, try to push you into a decision that you're not ready to make um, or get you to sell your house before you're ready to sell. Um, some people may tell you otherwise because they weren't planning to sell. I knocked on their door or I went to their yard sale, ended up selling them a house and sold them two more down the road. And But uh, I do tend to err on the side of caution of not being just like you were saying, you know, that, that sales person that just wants to give them, just wants to talk to them to see how, how they can help me. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Love it, dude. So then talk to us about your, your video strategy, man, because I know it's, it's unique, um, you know, but you're crushing it with, with the different videos that you're doing. So kind of walk us through what that looks like, how you, what you're doing to create those, how you're pushing them out and, you know, all that stuff. So, you know, videos are definitely a lot more popular now. I see, I see all sorts of videos. Uh, and when I see them, you know, I take notice because I, if somebody's doing something I feel like's working well, you know, I may try to implement it into what I'm doing, but um, how it kind of all started, I think I mentioned to you, you know, bow tie of the day, that was kind of something that I did routinely. And when I'd see people out and they'd say, Oh, I saw your bow tie of the day video. That was funny. And, you know, cause I tend to try to add some humor into the videos because not everybody's always looking for a home. I want to give them a reason to watch it and then still either learn something or see a house you know, kind of in the background. Um, but, you know, in, like did, I just did one yesterday. Uh, I got the, the sellers have young children. They were happy to let the, the kids be in the video. They have a great play yard. So, you know, I had, uh, I like kind of dove through the garden and, and all the corn and lifted up and the mom was doing a flip on the trampoline. The daughter was sliding down the slide. The dad and the son were chilling on the patio and, uh, you know, you put some good music in the background and, um, you know, it's, it's just something a little more entertaining to watch instead of just seeing a, a pan of a, of a backyard. Cause everybody, you know, pans of a backyard when they're showing the video and panning through the house. So trying to have something in the video that people are looking forward to saying, you know, what's he going to do next? You know, one of the funniest ones that, uh, I'd say we got close to 10,000 views on this one. Um, there was nothing spectacular about this house, but we, we did some funny things throughout. And at the end I had my mom, uh, you see me step back and, and throw a football real high. And then, you know, it cuts and you see her catch it and she spikes it. And our tagline is you may like it here. And she says that, and um, I can't tell you how many people reached out to us over that one. Uh, so just little things that, get people who aren't necessarily looking for a house to still watch our videos because you never know maybe they will like the house 
and otherwise wouldn't have even thought about moving. But really, it's who do they know that might would like that house or that area? Um, you know, so the more people you get to see it, they have their circles as well that they may connect you with. So um, getting people to watch the videos that aren't necessarily in the market. That's really our, because people are in the market, you know, you get your phone out and you know what's on the market. Everybody now. I mean, I'm sure, you know, people send you Zillow links all the time or whatever links. And um, so people that are in the market are already looking. We want to catch everybody else. Um, yep. So that, that's kind of a goal of ours. Yep. Get, getting people to like it, share it, and, and, you know, create that that just compounding momentum of that. Because at the end of the day, it's what? Get people to know us, like us, trust us. If you're what we do for a living, as long as we stay in front of them frequently, our business grows. And um, so I'm curious then, like, what, for distribution of the videos, is this stuff you're putting on YouTube, you know, and on your different social media accounts, all of the above, you know, emailing these out? Like, can you kind of walk us through? Because you can create a great video, but you got to then get the eyeballs on it. So mostly right now we're using Instagram, Facebook. Uh, there's a lot of things that we have goals to do better than we're doing now. And we have some of our videos on YouTube, but we could have a really great YouTube station. We, and we have one, but we're, we're not making sure we have everything there that needs to be. So, um, you know, for pe maybe people who are watching this thinking that, oh, this, these people produce, they have everything together. I don't in any way have everything together. I have a lot of things that I can do better, a lot of goals that I, I always tell myself, man, if I was really staying on track doing this, you know, my, my business could you know, go through the roof. Uh, but then I have to step back and tell myself, you know, one, be thankful for, for what I do have. And two, as long as you're trying to do, you're trying to make positive moves every day and just doing things that are helping people and helping yourself, helping your family, you know, be happy with what you're doing. So we can always look and the grass is greener on the other side, right? You know, you see agents and you think, man, they, they are doing it all right. Um, you know, so I try not to, not to uh, simmer on the things that uh, I feel like I should be doing better, but still have, I still do want to get better. So. Yep. I love it, man. Cause so many people just think everything's gotta be perfect. They got to know it all before they start taking action. And it's, you know, imperfect action will trump, you know, non-action all day long, you know, and I mean, it's the fun of the game, dude, is that we can always improve. Absolutely. Nothing, nothing replaces experience. I mean, there's just, there's no other way to explain it, especially in the real estate world when we have so many different interactions to, you know, how you, how you deal with people. So I'm sure you've experienced some people are easier to take care of than others. And, um, but you, you know, you have to, you have to stay that steady Eddie and, make sure that uh, you're doing what's best for them. Yep. Love it, dude. So I'm curious on the, the videos, you know, cause you're getting so many eyeballs on these and so forth. You guys have, I mean, are there call to actions in there for them to do business with you or is it more just round by watching the video, you know, over time they'll, they'll you know, get to know you and, and it's really just kind of a branding thing. Not as many call to actions, although that's something that I'm wanting to, I'm wanting to do more of, I, I'm real hesitant to, you know, toot my own horn. Like it's, that's one thing I enjoy about having a team is I can promote others. It's so much easier to promote others rather than promote yourself um, in, in my mind. Um, so I don't have as many things saying, you know, look what we did call us. Uh, although I do think some of that is needed because in the social media world, people see, Hey, this is, was his production. Here's what he did. Yeah, I'm gonna call him. Um, so, uh, we do some of it. Um, but it's not, I would say 5% of the videos right now, maybe that says, you know, what call us, uh, it's more about making sure that we're doing what's, you know, if it's a listing, we're doing what's best for those sellers. So we're, we're promoting, that home and that location, that area and that convenience and that lifestyle. And yes, call us if you want to learn more about this house. Yeah. Uh, not so much and call us to list your house. Um, Cause then we just turn that video about us instead of about who we're helping. Yeah, man. And I, I love the idea of, I mean, we see consistently, you know, right. Just a video of the house. 
But at the end of the day, dude, I mean, real estate's an emotional process. You know, people are buying a home that they, you know, feel themselves living in that home and, you know, they're creating what those memories would be like in their head. And, and so you're showcasing, you know, right. Like what that would almost look like if they lived there, like with the other family and, you know, and, and so forth. Dude, I think it's such a brilliant approach. Why they may like it here. You may yep. like it. what it's all about. Yep. 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 Home ownership, like what you know, what are you gonna love about living in this in this neighborhood or this house or having this kind of backyard? You know, so that's that's kind of what we try to direct our uh, our theme towards. Yeah, because I mean, you and you guys really pushed that tagline to the point where that's the website, you know, right? And you know, what what has been the 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 power of of a tagline? Oh, just <laughs> my buddy's making fun of me. Uh, always tagging. You may like it here on my stuff and. Um, people in the, uh, people throughout the community, I always saying, always holler at me when, you know, when they see me walking down the sidewalk or, uh, whatever it may be. It's funny. Cause you know, you never know who's really paying attention and who just slides by it and watches two seconds. But then when you're, you see them out in the, you know, your everyday in life and they're mentioning things that you do, uh, you know, that's when you realize the impact that it's having, um, on on the people paying attention to what you're doing yeah yeah so it definitely it definitely is making a difference man if people are shouting it out at you while they're driving by in the street my buddies have a good time uh cracking jokes uh yeah. on, so, but that's to be expected i tell them hey as long as you know what i do and and you know our relationship and i know that you trust me um that's my two goals you know because people want my thought is people would like to work with us because the type of person that they, the type of people they know we are. And, you know, besides that, I just want to make sure they know what I do. Um, so, um, so far, I think that um, we're accomplishing the goal of people knowing that, uh, you know, we're in real estate. Yep. And then, you know, you, I mean, you're, you're involved with local charities and so forth in your market. And I know that you're doing those not to gain a bunch of business out of it, but to give back to the community. You know, but from that, you know, I'm just curious of, of what that business impact is. I've got to imagine that it's also helped grow the business, even though I know that's not your main intention, but, you know, kind of, I mean, what, what impact has it been, you know, for those who are watching and listening, you know, if they're thinking about getting involved with their communities and so forth, you know, what, what is the, the impact been? And I mean, whether it's personal or business, you know, for you. All right. Well, it's uh, friendships. You know, you make new friendships. You're around people that otherwise you may not interact with. I know I've met, you know, several, you know, a lot of people that I otherwise I would not have, you know, by being part of these organizations. Um, Like-minded people, uh, it tends to be. Um, and then, you know, from there, just kind of like what it goes back to is getting to know them, them getting to know me. And, uh, you know, when, your transparency to me and everything is huge, but you know, when they just see what kind of person you are, um, I don't necessarily, we're used to, I would go and let them know, Hey, I'm in real estate. Here's my card. If there's everything I can do questions. I can answer, please let me know. Well, now I'm a little less, uh, I don't take that approach early on because I'd rather, Hey, just get to know me, get to know me. And then maybe they'll ask or they'll find, figure out, I'm in real estate or if there's an, an opportune time to mention it where it fits in the conversation, I'll mention it. But, uh, it's, you know, getting involved with things like this just gives you that opportunity to make relationships, uh, let people get to know you. And then, you know, them figuring out you're in real estate or you sharing that with them, uh, the rest can take care of itself. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when I was, uh, uh, looking earlier on in my, my success journey, when I was looking to find good mentors that were much more successful than me, you know, the, the number one thing that I heard over and over and over from other, you know, highly successful people was, man, get and find out the charities they're involved in, you know, and start volunteering at those charities to develop those relationships because highly successful people, they start looking, you know, what they can do to get back with that money. And uh, they tend to be very heavily involved in charities. So, you know, I'm sure that those relationships just continue to compound and so forth. Absolutely. And that's a, a goal just as far as, you know, one, being able to provide for my family, but, you know, being able to have a successful business allows you to, to give back more and help people. 
and uh, you know, just spread light. Um, you know, just showing people doing acts of kindness when you don't have to. That's really what means a, a lot to people uh, in my eyes. Yeah, love it, man. So you know, I'm curious, dude, with being. You know, uh, I mean, you're busy with your real estate business, you know, right? Helping a lot of families each and every every year. Plus, you know, you've got a young family at home, you know, right? Um, I think we can, you know, hear, hear one of your kids drumming in the background. Um, you're, <laughs> you know, at home right now. Um, you know, with that being said, though, man, I mean, it's, it can be hard to manage all of this stuff. You know, the family life plus our businesses and our clients. And, you know, what are some of the keys things that you do, whether it's, you know, a daily routine or, or something to, you know, make sure that you're there for your clients, you're there for your business, but then also, you know, not being an absent father and so forth. Right. Uh, I think it starts with, you know, taking care of yourself mentally, and physically, um, something I know that when I'm in my most productive times, which fortunately I'm on a good stint of it right now of waking up early, you know, wake up at four ten in the morning, get to have some quiet time because that's about the only time it's quiet in my house anymore. Um, I have a couple buddies come to my garage, I have a gym, we work out. So kind of, you know, that makes you feel better. I think, you know, taking care of your body physically. Um, and then, you know, when I'm back in the house by six in the morning, you, that's babies are up. So I love that I get to spend time with my children and my wife, you know, breakfast time and we, we will, I would say we sit down and eat breakfast. We do sometimes. We're kind of running around with them and feeding breakfast and eating at the same time. Um, but uh, so getting to spend that time with them uh, is something that, you know, I won't say I take for granted because I know so so many people that don't have that opportunity. Um, but I, I do just I cherish that and thank and thankful for it. Uh, but uh, oh, I forgot the. Uh, what I was talking about now. <laughs> yeah, we just, just schedule and structure of, of how to balance, you know, the, the busy business plus family and so forth. Starting early. One thing I love about, you know, I told you about the videos. Uh, some of my better videos has my son in them and the shows how great the yard is and he's striking the golf ball. I mean, we've got one, he's 19 months old and hitting the golf ball. Um, so whenever I can, you know, taking, taking my, taking my family to work, uh, because it's just time I get to spend with them. It's memories I have with them. Um, but uh, also sometimes real estate can be overwhelming. I would be telling a story if I have not been overwhelmed several times, uh, maybe earlier today. <laughs> um, but, you know, at the end of the day, just knowing you, you got to step back and, and, and take a breath and be thankful, you know, whether it's that you're busy or that you're getting to try to earn business. Um, and kind of, it's tough to set it aside. I think a lot of realtors will say that, but trying to set that aside and say, Hey, you know, this is, this is family time. Um, and I think early on I, I fell victim to no, you know, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. I've got to answer my phone. Um, and I'm still very good about answering my phone, but if there's, if there's something I'm doing, I'm reading the book with my son or we're having dinner, you know, I've got the text that says, Hey, I'll call you back as soon as I can. Um, so making sure that I don't, I know how, when there's something I absolutely have to do and there's something that can wait 30 minutes, um, you know, figuring that, that balance out, you know, works not always most important. Yeah. So. Yeah. How, how old's your, I know you mentioned your son's three, you have your three-year-old son. How old's your youngest? Uh, just turned one in April. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's awesome, man. man. They're full speed ahead. <laughs> now, now are you, are you a golfer as well? Or is that just something that an interest that your son took on? I, li I like to golf. Um, I, I didn't golf as much as he did when I was little. <laughs> he, he golfs a lot now. But uh, I do enjoy golf. Not the best golfer. I'm trying to get better. Don't play as much as I'd like to, but it's getting to where uh, when I take him to the golf course, I'm able to hit golf balls now as well while he's hitting. So I'm starting to get to practice a little more, let, let, um, teach my wife to play also. So I love that. And hopefully the, the, uh, the chunk man, which is our littlest one, he's huge, uh, will pick up golf as well so we can play as a family. Yeah. Uh, but, That's uh, awesome, dude. 
So then what's, uh, you know, man, I mean, you, you've had a lot of success in the, the seven years that you've been in this game and continue to grow and expand. Um, you know, what, what do you see this in the next, you know, five, 10 years? I mean, do you have a vision for, for where you want to take your real estate business and team? Uh, I just want to want to keep progressing. Uh, I'd say that's, that's my first thought. Um, but uh, goals right now, or we, we like having a smaller team because it, it's very much, it's very much, you know, we're referral based and we, we want people to just know how, what to expect from us and, you know, what our ethics are and just what you can expect uh, from us. I just said that twice, not supposed to do that, but, um, and we think, you know, the larger your team gets, you know, kind of the less you're able to, to manage that and, and make sure that uh, people are being treated and taken care of how you would like uh, them to be taken care of. And it's making sure it's a good reflection on yourself. Um, so, you know, we have people that work with us now, you know, they are friends. Um, and uh, I think that the reason we've done that is because we, we know what kind of people they are and we know, you know, what's most important to them. Um, so, you know, it, you can't replace being an honest person or, or being, being trustworthy or knowing that you're going to do the right thing. Even it doesn't matter how many houses you sell, if it's not for the right reasons or you'll, you'll cut somebody else down to make your sell. Uh, that's not how we operate. So we're, you know, it's being very selective as far as growing a team. Yeah. Um, I'd say that's uh, the short term to five year goal, 10 year goal. I'd be, I'd be lying to you if I told you I had a plan. So <laughs> no, I love it, dude. I love it, man. And you know, I'm curious, man, if, if Harold today could go back to Harold seven years ago, when he first jumped in this business, knowing everything, you know, now, if you could have a conversation with your younger self and give yourself two pieces of advice that you feel would have just fast forwarded this success journey that you're on, what would those two pieces of advice look like? That's a good one, yeah. Um, there were times early on where uh, I didn't listen as well. Um, and there were opportunities that I had that if I were, if I would have been more persistent, I know that it could have created, it one would have gotten some deals that I, I know I missed out on, but also created a working relationship uh, with people that could have continued on for a long time. Um, not that, not that, uh, I haven't worked with them after that. Cause I, one thing I am not afraid to do is when I mess up, I'll say, you know, man, I, sorry, I didn't jump on this when I should have. I know, uh, you gave me an opportunity. Uh, one's coming to mind right now of a neighbor that lives down the street, but, um, you gave me an opportunity and, uh, I didn't, I didn't jump on it like I should have but thank you for giving me that opportunity. And I'm sorry that I missed out. Um, so, you know, not procrastinating. I'd say that's the first, that's number one, um, which still have a problem with today. I think uh, maybe a lot of people do maybe, but I know I do. Uh, and number two, I don't know. Had to, uh, probably would have started uh, dressing more professional sooner. Cause I think I, I went a full year where I said, Oh no, this is fine. It's a collar and long pants. And looking back, I'm like, wow, I looked really dumb. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and sometimes when it was with someone that, uh, you know, I really should have made a better first impression. Um, fortunately I still have a great relationship with them, friends and work relationship, but still I, I, I have a vivid memory of going to a guy's, it was a robotic expo. Um, and I, I was not dressed how I should have been dressed um, for a guy that I've sold a few of his houses now that are very nice homes, but fortunately it still worked out. But yeah, you know, you just learn from your experience and try not to do it again. Yep. Yep. Powerful stuff, man. And you know, Harold, for those that are watching and listening, man, if they, 
if they want to check out some of these great videos, you know, that you put out there, if they want to, you know, follow you on your success journey, you know, whether that be on social media or so forth, or, you know, we're all realtors here in the real estate industry that, that are here listening to this uh, podcast. Maybe they have a referral for your market and so forth. Where's the best place dude, to be able to get in touch with you, to follow you and uh, you know, all those great things. I'd say to follow me and kind of see, you know, what I'm doing, uh, with the videos and uh, just how how I'm connecting with people uh, is definitely Facebook. Uh, just Harold Collins, uh, you know, messaging me on Facebook. I, I always I always get those. You can follow me on Instagram as well. Um, but uh, Facebook is where you know you'll see how I connect with people, uh, what I'm doing. Maybe a little bit different than others. Um, maybe you'll like some of the ideas. Maybe not. Um, but uh, I'm always open to constructive criticism so if anybody says hey man you know i i saw this and thought this would have been great or or if, if they see something they like i'd love to, to hear about it because uh you know you never know what uh how what you're putting out there affects people or how they take it uh so i love uh, i love feedback whether good or bad um and if there's ever any way i can help anybody that uh would like to reach out to me i'm happy to uh I've had, been very fortunate to have mentors that are open and welcome to, to sharing uh, their experiences and uh, their successes and failures. Uh, so uh, I would encourage anybody who is willing to reach out uh, to reach out and because uh, it means a lot, you know, it, it would mean a lot. It means a lot to me when people ask me, you know, hey, how are you doing this? Because, you know, giving people giving people guidance, uh, them wanting your guidance, I feel like is uh, uh, admirable. Yep, so. that's awesome. Yep, love it, dude. And those that are watching, listen, we'll make it super easy on you. Wherever you guys are at, if you just scroll below, we'll have all Harold's contact information, his social media links, all that stuff there below. And Harold, man, I... I know you're a busy man. Uh, you took time out of your busy to be here. It truly means a lot. I also know that you have an appointment that you need to run on. Uh, so, you know, I, I wish you the best with that appointment, locking that appointment up, dude. Um, but again, truly appreciate you taking time to be here, man. This has been an amazing time and uh, it's been an honor, my friend. Boy, man. Well, I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much for having me on. I love what you're doing. I love how you're connecting people, you know, uh, really, you're you're a you're a good role model for the real estate industry and uh, somebody for people to look up to. And uh, just thank you for your time very much. Yep, 100%, my friend. And thank you for the kind words. It truly means a lot. And those watching and listening, as always, thank you so much for all your support. And thank you for being here and watching and listening. And we will see you next time. Peace. Peace. Hope you enjoyed this GSD Mode podcast episode. Now make sure you get shit done and smash that subscribe button now. 